Hello everyone. The lesson we are going to learn today is called surface tension. So this surface tension is a property of liquids uh, mainly just like viscosity and uh, I have highlighted the word uh, surface in another color because it has something to do with the surface. Now when you say viscosity we consider the whole liquid but surface tension when you consider surface tension for a liquid it's only it's a property on, on which, which is considered only on the surface of the liquid. Now let's see how surface tension is created. Now when it comes to viscosity, viscosity was created due to the friction or resistive forces created between liquid layers. Likewise, let's see how surface tension is created. Now for that, let's take a sample of a liquid and if you take a sample of a liquid inside a vessel, then uh, there will be certain liquids. Now I'll take this as the liquid surface and uh, there will be liquid molecules or since this is um, physics, let's say particles on the surface as well as particles inside. And uh, if you are a chemistry student, you have learned that there are intermolecule interactions. There are different types of intermolecule interactions, dipole-dipole interaction, London force, dispersion force, um, hydrogen bond likewise. So normally when you take water, it is hydrogen bond, dipole-dipole interaction, even London force, but predominant one is hydrogen bond. But anyways, uh, chemistry aside, let's just focus, just consider the intermolecular forces. So if you take a molecule which is underneath, now this is the surface. So when you consider a molecule which is inside, un underneath the surface, forces will be acting from all around. Now the, this molecule will be attracting this, a molecule from here will be attracting this, a molecule above this will be attracting this, a molecule below this will be attracting this. Hence, there will be forces from every side and we know force is a vector. So, the, uh, when you consider all these forces, resultant will be 0. But at the meantime, if you take the molecules on top, if you take this molecule, it has a horizontal force, okay, balanced out and all the other forces are downwards. But there aren't any forces in the upward direction because this is the liquid and this is air. So, uh, there are no intermolecular, uh, there are no liquid molecules here, so there won't be any forces. So this, the top part, I mean the molecules on the surface or the particles on the surface will, uh, will not experience zero resultant force. And what happens is, you can see, when you see from top, what you see is, the, between the particles, there will be a uh, attractive force between the particles. So on the surface of the liquid, a membrane, kind of a membrane, something like a membrane will be uh, created because of these forces and because these uh, molecules on the surface do not experience a zero resultant force. So that uh, nature is what we call surface tension. The, for, the membrane kind of thing created on the surface of the liquid due to the intermolecular attractions, all right. Now, <clears throat> we see the effect of surface tension in lot of places in real life. The first one we can say uh, the rain droplets. Now when rain falls, they are the water drops are spherical in shape. Why is that? So let's think about that later. Let's discuss about that later. That is one. And the second phenomenon we see is uh, soap bubbles. So when you take a little bit of soap solution in your hand and when you blow it, you get a large soap bubble. Right. How is it created? Why is it created? That is also due to surface tension. And then next one we can discuss is uh, insects floating. Now when I say floating, insects, they don't just float, certain insects, they walk on, they like move on the, move on water. It's like they walk on water. So that's something really special. How do the insects float? Now normally when there's an object uh, floating, we have learned in mechanics, weight is balanced by up thrust. We are not talking about that floating. We are talking about uh, uh, insects moving on the liquid surface without submerging. So that is uh, something new. It is due to surface tension. And then another phenomenon we see one is the formation of ma liquid meniscus. Now when you take water in a glass tube, water meniscus looks like this. Uh, the fourth phenomenon is liquid meniscus. You, even in small classes we have learned uh, water looks like this, but if you take mercury, it looks like this, this is mercury. So this is also due to surface tension. Likewise, uh, there are 
other one the uh, fifth one uh, the ability of liquids to wet a surface so when i when i say that uh, the ability of liquids to wet a surface when i what i what do i mean by that think of a uh, surface like this a wooden surface a table right if you pour a little bit of water on the surface water will look like this yeah so you can see water is uh, wetting a major uh, a lot of wood like this it's wetting but if you pour a little bit of mercury onto that surface you will see mercury creating a small sphere kind of thing like this so you can see only a little part of the surface is uh, getting wet so this is also another phenomenon we observe due to surface tension now these two are somewhat similar you can see here water is wetting the glass more but mercury is not wetting the glass as much as water is doing so these two are more or less similar but all these phenomenon we see around us it's due to uh, surface tension and this you have must have seen somewhere else also now this is a uh, uh, water and the mercury on uh, a wooden surface but water can be different in different surfaces now for example there is this leaf sometimes in the morning in certain uh, plants on the leaf on the leaf of the plant or on the edge of the blade of the leaf you will see water drop like this water drops the dew drops will be a beautiful spherical shape that is also again due to surface tension so this is a primary introduction about surface tension and how is it how it's created that is mainly due to the attractive forces on between the molecules of the liquid on the surface of that liquid all right now let's try to understand uh, the now this is the qualitative analysis let's try to understand the quantitative uh, analysis of uh, uh, surface tension or normally for viscosity there was a definition Co we we used coefficient of viscosity and then we wrote equations and we studied that but uh, now surface tension also we need uh, something to compare surface tension yeah right fine so surface tension is defined like this now if you take if you take a, a liquid right this is a vessel which contains liquid so i'll draw the vessel like this in 3d so you will get a better understanding fine all right so now let's say inside this there is a liquid so i feel the liquid okay liquid looks like this so this is the liquid all right this is the liquid they have added liquid and uh, that is the reason why i have left this part like this so this is the surface of the liquid all right so on this surface of the liquid if you uh, imagine a line imagine a line on either side of the uh, that or okay, let's say let's say there are some points like this i mean or molecules like that so on from either side there will be attractive forces like this right there will be attractive forces created on the surface so the definition for surface tension we normally use letter t uh, or sometimes they use gamma also in older past papers but in newer past papers they usually use t it depends so the definition for surface tension is we say a surface tension is equal to uh, force acting per unit length on the liquid surface this is the definition now see i have explained you how the force acts on the surface uh, in a horizontal direction and uh, it's like uh, because of that force on it is create a membrane like uh, uh, formation is created on the liquid surface so there will be forces here so the definition for surface tension is that force acting per unit length so for surface tension we use the letter t so t is equal to force divided by length all right so this is the definition for there are two definitions this is the first definition for surface tension so using this definition uh, if you try to find the si unit this is a new component so we have to define the units si unit if you take uh, that is going to be force over length we have to use newton per meter because force divided by length and when you to come when it comes to dimensions you can find the dimensions because a new component that's going to be ml t minus 2 divided by l so that is m t minus 2 
surface tension and something else also have so something another quantity has the same uh, dimension and unit i hope you guys can remember f equals kx hooke's law in that spring constant also has uh, somewhat similar equation now if i change this equation it's going to look like this f equals tl where f is force created due to surface tension all right t is the surface tension and uh, l is the length we are talking about so in this equation this looks similar somewhat similar to f equal kx so k and t spring constant and surface tension they have the same units and the same dimensions but they are two completely different uh, quantities now surface tension is a new uh, property of liquid we have uh, discussed we have in, uh, we have introduced that to our syllabus now and um, viscosity it's a property which depends on the nature of the liquid just like that surface tension also is a property which depends on the nature of the liquid now for example for water for water the surface tension is roughly around uh, 72 into 10 to the power minus 3 newton meter minus 1 and uh, for mercury this is for water right for mercury this value is slightly higher it's around uh, I think somewhere around 600 into 10 to the power minus 3 newton meter minus 1. So, you can see the surface tension of mercury is much higher compared to that of water. That is why we see this difference and this difference. So, this is the meniscus of water and this is the meniscus of mercury. These are just examples I gave you uh, for you to have an understanding about the phenomenon we see around us in, uh, in our day to day life due to surface tension. Now, I will be explaining you in the next tutorial why each of these things are happening. So, this is a basic introduction to surface tension. Okay, now let us continue the discussion about uh, surface tension. Now, before uh, we move on to the next part, uh, there, there are two types of forces which act between uh, molecules. Biology students might have already learned this. We call them uh, cohesive forces. And uh, if you can remember, I know you are murmuring. The next force that is uh, adhesive force. So, we are not going to go in detail cohesive forces and adhesive forces. Now, cohesive forces means forces acting between two similar molecules. So, I will mark two similar molecules like this. Okay. Now, example, uh, between a water molecule and a, another water molecule, between a particle of mercury and another particle of mercury. That is an example for adhesive, adhesive sorry, cohesive force. When it comes to adhesive force, it is a force between two different particles it's a it's the interaction between two different particles uh, the ideal example would be the interaction between water and uh, glass or else interaction between mercury and glass so you have to understand uh, these two clearly uh, um, in biology most of you have learned in uh, max students what you can remember is how, how you can remember is adhesive. Sometimes we call adhesive for gums, glues, we use, use that term. So, we normally use glues for to paste two different surfaces. So, remember like that, that is what adhesive forces, forces are and cohesive forces. Now, who is responsible out of these two for surface tension? Is it cohesive or adhesive? It is obviously cohesive. So, this is where the surface tension part comes because surface tension is the phenomenon which is created on the surface of liquid. So, when it is between liquid molecule, uh, water molecule, water molecule or a mercury molecule, mercury molecule. Uh, <coughs> I do not really want to use the term mercury molecule, let us say mercury particle, mercury particle. Let us not go deep into chemistry, just uh, physics. So, let us use the terms particle to be on the safe side. Uh, anyways, uh, this is uh, this, this is the force which uh, creates the surface tension. Right. Now, Earlier, we learned a uh, few phenomena which uh, happen due to surface tension. Now, I am I'm, I'm planning to explain uh, one, one, uh, each one by one here. 
And I think I missed one another observation that is called capillary rise. That is the sixth one. I'll come back to that and I'll explain uh, how that happens. And um, and one more thing about surface tension. Few more things. Uh, now, for example, now if you can see my hands uh, are really dirty. Uh, if I use just normal water, the hands won't wash much. But if I use a detergent or a soap and wash my hands with, with water, then uh, these stains will be removed uh, quicker and uh, better. So that is also due to surface tension. And another example, uh, you use cool water and then hot water to wash your hand. So which one will remove more stain? It's hot water, not cool water. Again, it is due to surface tension. How does it happen? Let us discuss. Okay, now, first, uh, uh, I just wanted to explain you what cohesive forces and adhesive forces are. Right now, uh, surface tension is created due to cohesive forces. I explained you how surface tension is created in this diagram. Anyways, now let us see the factors which affect the surface tension of a particular liquid. Now, for water, uh, we wrote two values for water and mercury. These two values are at uh, 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, now I am mentioning the temperature. So, just like coefficient of viscosity, now you must uh, have predicted already that surface tension also depends on uh, temperature and yes, it does. So, first factor which is going to affect surface tension of a particular liquid is definitely temperature, right. Now, what happens when, uh, when you increase the temperature? What will happen? Now, when you increase the temperature, we know in a, in a liquid, the molecules will gain energy and they will have higher kinetic energy, they will st start moving faster. So, the liquid interactions reduce. Hence, we can conclude when the temperature is increased, I am using the letter T for who surface tension will reduce. So, higher the temperature, lower will be the surface tension. And the next one is impurities. All right, now what is uh, impurity? What are impurities? Now, the example I am going to use is this. Uh, you take pure water, uh, let us say this is pure water, all right, pure water and now to that pure water, I am adding a little bit of uh, detergent or some soap, uh, um, I mean hand wash liquid or something like that, some soap, right. So, here it is pure water, just water molecules, here I have added a foreign uh, object. So, that is an impurity. So, when I add impurities, what happens? When you have only pure water, between water molecules, the interaction is much stronger. But when you add foreign uh, particles like detergent or soap, the interaction between water molecules is disturbed because someone else comes in the middle. So, interaction between water molecules reduces, hence surface tension reduces. Now, this is a uh, uh, pure water, I will write again in mind and this is a soap solution. Yeah, it is water but with soap. If you compare surface tension, uh, pure water will have a larger surface tension. I hope you understood why it is happening. So, when you increase the amount of impurities in your liquid, the surface tension reduces. We reduce the surface tension of water by adding impurities for our purpose. That is why we use detergent to wash clothes. I will explain why. All right. Uh, for that, we will need this. Okay. So, these are the two factors which affect uh, the surface tension of a liquid. Sometimes they will ask you questions. All right, guys. Now, let us uh, discuss uh, some other aspects uh, about surface tension. Now, first thing, um, when surface tension is high, I will uh, explain the rest here. Let us say now, when surface tension is high, who is high between these two forces? Cohesive force will be more dominant cohesive forces will be more dominant. Right, now we discussed, I will uh, for uh, now for in my uh, other examples, uh, I will choose uh, CF for cohesive forces and AF for adhesive forces to save time and space, all right, fine. Now, we, uh, we discussed little while ago when you take a wooden surface, all right, when you take a wooden surface, when you pour water, water will do this, it will wet the wooden surface more. But when you pour mercury, mercury does not do this, mercury does this same volume of mercury and water. Huh? So, see only little part of uh, the the wood is uh, you know made uh, wood is interacted wood and only only little part of wood is interacting with mercury let us say that way and a larger portion of uh, wood is interacting with water. Now, in water here what is happening? Here what happens is the 
cohesive forces are less dominant than the adhesive forces because water has a relatively a lower um, surface tension. So, it happens this way. But when it comes to mercury here, we know that mercury has a higher value for surface tension. So, in mercury, cohesive forces are more dominant than the adhesive forces. So, the interaction between mercury mercury particles will be more than mercury wood particles. That is the reason for this. Yes. All right. Fine. That is uh, so. That is one example explained. That's uh, this is capital T's uh, surface tension. All right. Fine. So now sec another another example. Um, when your surface tension is high. When the surface tension is high, like this, uh, the cohesive forces will be much stronger than the adhesive forces. So, because of that, uh, interaction uh, between water and uh, let us say cloth, cloth will be less. Okay, right. When normally water has when when uh, normal normal water has a uh, higher surface tension than water with impurity. This is what I'm uh, comparing. All right, second case. So when when you take normal water, it has a relatively higher surface tension. Then uh, cohesive forces are more dominant. So water and cloth will not interact much. So water will not wash the cloth properly. But when you add detergent, once detergent or soap is added is added once detergent is added what will happen surface tension reduces then who becomes more dominant adhesive force becomes more dominant than cohesive force uh, when the surface tension reduces the interaction between water molecule water molecule reduces so water molecule will start interacting with the uh, cloth and cloth gets washed or oh, i do not want to use that term let us say stains get removed better. I hope you understood this concept, all right, fine. This is why, this is how uh, soap helps us to remove stains, again so surface tension. And then the next one, third one, uh, when temperature is uh, low, surface tension is high, here we learnt. So, when surface tension is high, again, uh, cohesive force is more dominant than adhesive force, uh, liquid does not wet a surface much, correct. Now, this is why cool water does not wash our hands, why cool water does not interact with our hand as much as it interacts with its own molecules when the temperature is low. But when you increase the temperature, when you use hot water, what happens? Surface tension reduces. Then cohesive forces become less dominant than adhesive force when liquid wets the surface more. So, stains get removed. Stains get removed. All right. So, this is why uh, soap water and hot water can remove your stains in the clothes better than normal water or cool water. All right. So, that is how you can uh, uh, use the concept of surface tension to explain those. So, uh, summary, summary, when the surface tension is high, interaction between liquid particles will be more. So, interaction between liquid and the cloth will be less. So, the stains will not get removed. So, if you want to remove the stains, you have to find a way to reduce the surface tension of the liquid. So, how can you do that? You can use two ways. One is increasing the temperature and the other one is increasing the amount of impurities. How do you increase the temperature? Use hot water. How do you increase the amount of impurities? Add soap or detergent.